Hello and welcome to the Xcode 4.5 tutorial and today I'll just be quickly hoovering over some of the new major changes that Apple brought with the release of um, iPhone 5 and Xcode 4.5. Now if you create a single view application and remember to enable storyboarding and you go into your storyboard file and uh, you see you still have this one view controller um, and it all looks yeah, it, it looks exactly like the 4.4 um, except there's a small button down here which lets you change the size and this is the differences in the iPhone 5 screen contra the iPhone 4 screen whereas this is the iPhone 5 screen and this is the iPhone 4 and this enables you to see how your application will look on both uh, screens and let's demonstrate this by taking in this button here and we place it in the lower left corner and you see it's placing these two um, lines here, these two blue lines, they're also new and they are called constraints. Now what they do is that they specify where your view objects are going to be placed um, in different environments. If it's the iPhone 4 it will try and put it in the lower left corner with a certain um, horizontal uh, space from the left side and a vertical space from the bottom. And that's actually these two blue lines and now if we press this button down here we talked about before you can see that it got bigger but the button is actually still where we want it to be it's in the lower left corner it doesn't uh, you, you could expect it to just uh, place itself up here but it doesn't it actually places itself down here and that's thanks to the constraints so more or less you can actually create your content without worrying about the new uh, iPhone 5 screen, if you know how to work with constraints that is, because things can get a bit messy and if you've been trying to work with Xcode 4.5 and all of a sudden your, your view objects they started to act really weird when you ran the application, it could be due to the fact that you didn't really specify your constraints properly. <clears throat> so if you ever have a problem with the view acting strange or placing itself really weird or and maybe even changing its size um, check your constraints because that can be the root of the problem um, and you can also read more on constraints in Apple's uh, <coughs> user interface guide which has been updated with the release of Xcode 4.5 now aside from the new uh, screen layouts and constraints. There's also a new thing called a collection view and this is actually a very nice feature um, and you can just drag it in like I did here and you actually have a starting point. Um, if you ever worked with table views before this will be similar to that and you can actually more or less start working with it by uh, just jumping right in. That's what I did at least but you can read more about that on the guidelines as well if you just search for a collection view in the documentation a lot of information will pop up and I might even make a video on both constraints and collection views if you'd like but I think that's actually the the major changes and I'll just talk a little more about constraints because they are really important because if we drag in two buttons here, like this, you can see there's a blue line here whereas it will align these buttons in respect to each other and that can cause problems um, because you might change the size of one button programmatically and that would also change the size of the other one so you really have to be careful about these constraints because right now they are depending on each other and if you don't want that you have to specify other constraints so they can place themselves in uh, alignment of other things like um, the sides or the other stuff or other view objects so again be careful on these uh, on these constraints and if your views are acting weird constraints could be the problem so have a look at those and you can edit them but um, constraints are for another video because you can go 
really deep in constraints. They they can be quite advanced, <clears throat> but for the most part and for most basic applications, you won't have any problems with them. Then you can just design your user interface like this, and it will look the same on both um, iPhone screens. I uh, like this. And I think that's just about it. Um, there's been other changes, of course, but I think these are the key changes. Um, but you can, obviously, you can read up on all the changes. Um, Apple sent you a mail containing all the changes. <clears throat> but um, I think that's it for this video. It's been a while since I've um, made a video, so I'm just getting into it again and practicing my English. It's uh, become a bit rusty. Um, but I'll be making more videos, so uh, please let me know if you'd like me to talk about something in particular, uh, constraints or how to make a collection view or if anything, just ask away. Um, and just as a final note, I've started working on a new project. Um, it's actually a pretty big project. And while I was working on it, I thought that a lot of the things I did could make great tutorials. So if you're into making games, you should really subscribe because I'll be making some game-specific tutorials using only Xcode and not Cocos 2D or other game engines. I'll be using plain Xcode and plain Objective-C to get it going. So if you're into game development, you should really subscribe and if you're not into game development you can still learn uh, a thing or two because I'll be using stuff like the collection views and the constraints so uh, stay tuned for my next video